In today's video, I take $96 plus this, and I get this. Toys for life. In the last video, we upgraded the C5's front end with some beautiful, new, amazingly priced turn signal assemblies, and now the C5's rear end is feeling left out. Now, I can't have that, so on the agenda for today is some serious surgery to perform an upgrade to the rear end that I've been wanting to do for a long time. After quite a bit of thought on how best to do this to fit my needs, I've decided to amputate the C5 stock exhaust tips in order to make room for these much more aggressive three inch stainless steel dual wall slant tips. Now, I don't have anything against the C5 stock tips except for maybe three things. First, they're stock and well, they look stock. Second, they're kind of puny and they look like they flow enough to maybe make 350 horsepower. And since we're at over 600 at the crank, something bigger is in order. And third, I've owned this C5 for about 10 years now and I'm kind of tired of looking at the same tips. Plus, Ben's exhaust tips are so kick-ass looking, I just had to do something. Now I know a lot of you are gonna ask the obvious question, why not just buy an aftermarket catback exhaust? And the short answer is, where's the fun in that? But for a more objective, well thought out, rational answer, stick around to the end and I'll go through my full reasoning for retaining the C5 stock mufflers. Now, let's get started. The first step is to get the C5 up in the air so we've got good access to the exhaust tips. I'm not aware of any kits available to replace the C5's exhaust tips and these mufflers have this kind of unusual deal where there's two inch and three quarter pipes coming out of each muffler and that's going to make it a little bit tricky but that just means we'll have to make it up as we go along. I bought these tips off of Amazon because they're stainless steel. They've got a three and a half inch diameter. I love the dual wall design we got going on here. And if I cut them in this area right here, it'll give me about the right length to fit inside the C5's exhaust cutout area and set them back just a little bit further from where the stock tips reside. Now is the point of no return. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the exterior stainless steel covers here and it'll reveal this inner piece here so we can see what we have to work with. quick look at the exhaust cutter tool I'm using. They don't cost much and these little blades are replaceable so this deserves a spot in your toolbox. Alright so I've got one down and one to go on this side. That really didn't take all that long. Alright so I think the spacing here is gonna line up well. Now one thing to keep in mind I don't like how far in recessed the stock tips are but I've seen people that have their tips sticking way out and I hate that look too. So I'm gonna go with it about that distance there, which means I have to cut it basically across this weld here. And since these tips are lined up perfectly the way I want them, I'm gonna weld a little piece of metal across the top and the bottom to maintain this relationship. So I've only really got one tip to align on here as opposed to four separate ones. And again, these are just temporary braces to kind of stabilize and maintain that relationship between the two tips until I can get this welded on the C5, and then we'll remove these braces. That looks pretty good right there. I'm gonna go ahead and put a tack weld on it and uh, secure that in place. All right, that'll hold this in place for now. 
so I can work on this side, get it to the same stage as this, then stand back, get a good look at it with a straight edge, make sure everything looks the way I want it, and then we'll solid weld it in. Got this kind of blocked up here the same way I did this one, but I'll be measuring about 27 ways from Sunday to hopefully get these things perfectly symmetrical, which is what I'm shooting for. This is such a key step, and I've been measuring, I've got the level out. After a while, your eyes start to play tricks on you. I gotta come back and take a fresh look at it before I do any more welding. The reason you do tack welds is in case you mess up, and I messed up because as you can see, the driver's side tip sticks out the back about three or four millimeters further than the passenger side. So I'll cut those, reposition, and try again. About a half an hour later, much better. And I know you guys would notice. Let's see what it looks like on the ground. So I still need to go back and weld these up a little bit better, but first, let me give you my reasons, and I've got a lot of them, for not just swapping in an aftermarket catback exhaust. First, I've actually tested my C5's exhaust, and it flows pretty darn well. It's only got just a little over seven pounds per square inch, at 6,500 RPMs with the supercharged setup. Now, if it was a naturally aspirated application with, say, 400 horsepower at the rear tires, the back pressure from the exhaust would be pretty much negligible. Keep in mind, I've also added the exhaust bypass modification to my exhaust, and that frees up a little bit of back pressure, and it also sounds a bit more aggressive without sounding obnoxious. Second, most aftermarket catback exhaust systems for the C5 utilize the same two and a half inch diameter pipe that comes with the stock exhaust. And since I have the exhaust bypass modification, even if the Corsa or the Billy Boat or whatever had a freer flowing muffler, it's still not gonna add any horsepower over this setup. Third, even if an aftermarket catback did add a teeny bit of horsepower, the most popular systems are probably the Corsas due to their great looks and their great sound. But at $1,600 plus, I'll pass. Fourth, there are a few three inch aftermarket catbacks on the market, but I've heard too many secondhand accounts that these systems have drone, and for me, that's a deal killer. And last, if my C5 was naturally aspirated, I would probably locate and purchase a C5 Z06 titanium exhaust system, but I won't do that for my C5 for two very good reasons. First, my horsepower level definitely benefits from the exhaust bypass mod that we talked about a couple minutes ago, and with the stainless steel stock setup, that's pretty easy to do. With the C5 Z06's titanium exhaust, that gets a lot more difficult to find someone to do it and more expensive. And the more important reason is the stock stainless steel mufflers on my C5 weigh considerably more than the Z06's titanium setup. And normally that's a bad thing, but in supercharged applications, traction is at a premium. And if you can put some weight directly behind the rear drive tires, that's gonna help. Now let's go ahead and finish this project. Now that I have the tips pretty much where I want them, I'm gonna put a few more tack welds in. That way when I remove the exhaust, if it gets bumped or hit on anything, I don't lose the alignment that I've worked so hard to achieve. Then go ahead and drop the sway bar down. You don't have to remove it, just swing it out of the way. Grab an assistant, it makes it a lot easier if you've got one. And then it's just two bolts on each side and carefully kind of rotate the exhaust down and around the axle and pull it out of the way. Repeat the same thing for the passenger side. 
All right, so the tips are fully welded on. Be sure to save some of the scrap stainless steel that you cut off earlier, because there are some little gaps that you're gonna need to fill in, but don't worry, when you weld everything up, it'll look great and you'll never see it. So guys, at the end of the day, this wasn't a terribly difficult project. It's just metal that needs to be cut and welded. And I think the results were well worth the $96 and the few hours that it took. So if you enjoyed this content, hit that thumbs up so YouTube knows to share it with the C5 community. And as always, thanks for watching.